So you've just punched this calculation into your calculator and your calculator gives you this monster long answer. And so you ask the inevitable question, how do I know where to round to? Well, there is an answer to this question. And the answer is you always round to proper significant figures. Now, what is the big deal about significant figures? Why are they so important? Why do I keep hearing so much about these when I'm making measurements in science class? Well, one thing is that remember when you make measurements, the significant figures are important because they indicate the level of exactness in a measurement. If I see that someone measured something as 1500 milliliters and somebody else measured something as 1543.32, I know that that was made with a much, much more exact, more precisely marked instrument. And so I have a pretty good idea at uh, where the guessing is. Again, the whole point is to know what level of guessing is there in our measurements. So when we do calculations, we have to consider the level of guessing. Uh, we can't have answers of calculations that are super, super exact if our measurements that we use to make those calculations had a lot of guessing in them. For example, uh, why are sig figs so important? Well, let me tell you a story about Joey. Now, Joey really liked Sarah, and he finally got up the nerve to ask Sarah out on a date. Okay, well, why are sig figs so important? Well, they can help make your dates better. Now, Joey finally asked Sarah on a date, and he decided he was going to take Sarah to the movies. Now, he planned ahead, called the movie theater, and found that the tickets were going to be $9 each. So he knew he was going to need $18 to take Sarah to the movies. So he looked in his wallet, did a click quick glance in there, saw, oh, there's a 20, there's a 10, uh, there's a 5 or 2, and there's a whole bunch of 1s in there, so yes, I'm in business. I've got about $50 in my wallet. So earlier that day, he starts thinking, all right, well, I need to start looking good for my date. So he goes to the barber shop, gets a haircut. Haircut costs him about $10. Then he's out shopping, he sees the latest pair of KD socks, and he says, man, Sarah's really going to like me in these socks. So he looks at the price tag, ah, there's $17.50, that's a lot for a pair of socks, but then sees, oh, they're 15% off. So hey, he does a little quick math in his head, say, that's going to be about $14 for this socks. Okay, I'm going to get them. Well, if I'm going to go meet Sarah, I'm going to need some flowers. So he stops at the uh, flower discount shop and is able to get a nice little bouquet of flowers for $4.99. And then one last touch, of course, we need the breath mints, $1.29 at the store. So he's all ready to go. Um, he says, all right, well, hey, this should work. I got $50 in my wallet or about $50 in my wallet. So spent $10 on a haircut, uh, about $14 on my socks. $4.99 for my flowers, $1.29 for my breath mints. I still have $19.72 left. My tickets to the movie are going to cost me $18. I'm in business. I'm going to have a whole $1.72 left over. So we are good to go. So Joey goes out, says hi to Sarah, picks her up, gives her his flowers. She's happy to see him, happy to get the flowers. And the two take off to go to the movie theater. So they get up in line. Go to buy the tickets as expected. The guy says, all right, tickets are going to be $18. So Joey gets out his wallet, looks in his wallet, and finds out there's only $14.24 in his wallet. This shocked him. How can this be? If I've only got $14.24, I don't have enough money to buy the movie tickets. I need $18 for that, which means Sarah's not going to be too happy about that. And so that date did not end very well. So how can this happen? How did this travesty happen? Well, Joey did a quick glance in his wallet. So his $50 was an approximate $50. When he went back, and if we counted it really, really more exact, we would find that, all right, in this example, Joey really only had $46 in his wallet. He was using that rough approximate of 50 in his earlier mathematics. His haircut. Yeah, it was $10, but there was tax on that, so it was $10.60. If he did a little more exact math on his socks, he would have found that his socks cost him $14.88. The flowers were $4.99. Mints were $1.29. So using these more precise measurements, we would find out that, yes, 
there were only $14.24 in his wallet. But because Joey was not taking the level of exactness of his measurements in mind, he wasn't paying attention to sig figs in his earlier approximation, he unfortunately was very misled, thinking that he was going to have $19.72 in his wallet, but in reality, he only had $14.24. So you want to make sure you're paying very close attention to sig figs because they'll help you get better dates and help your dates go better. Another example of this, uh, a little more scientific here, is if I'm making some measurements. Maybe I'm measuring my amount of Kool-Aid that I have in here. So in my one beaker, I can look to see, and well, it looks like there's about 30 milliliters. That's a pretty good measurement of how much is in the beaker on the left. Now we have a graduated cylinder with some water on the right side here. And if we look at that very carefully, we might say, well, that looks like 2.24 milliliters. Pretty good, accurate measurement. So let's say we were going to uh, pour our total water, the water from both of our instruments, in, and figure out, well, what is our total amount of water that we would have all together? Well, we could look at these measurements and say, I've got 30 milliliters plus 2.24 milliliters. And we could say, well, we should have 32.24 milliliters of water all together. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, uh, take our amounts there. Let's mix them together. Now we're expecting 32.24 milliliters from our earlier addition. And so we pour both amounts of water into our cylinder. And we might find there's only 29.3 milliliters. Now how can this be? You're telling me that 30 plus 2.24 and we got 29.93? Well, if we think about sig figs, and if we think about the level of guessing in those earlier two measurements, we realize that that 30 milliliters was not a very exact measurement. Okay, We were guessing at the three. We might have looked at that beaker before and said, well, maybe it was 20 milliliters. Maybe it was 40 milliliters. The 30 is a very, very guessed number. So I can't assume that that's exactly 30. And that's what we did earlier when we thought, well, we were going to get 32.24 we were not considering sig figs, and we were not considering the fact that we were guessing at the 30, because really, it could have easily been 20 milliliters. And if I add 2.24 to 20, well, I might only have 22.24. So it makes sense when we think about the fact that that 30 is a very, very guessed measurement that I can take about 30 milliliters, I can add 2.24 to it, and I very well could come up with 29.3 milliliters. So again, bottom line is when we're doing calculations with measurements, our motto is that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. We can have some very, very exact measurements like that 2.24. But if I'm adding uh, a measurement that has a lot of guessing to it, like 30, my final answer can't be any more exact as my weakest link. So about the best I can do here is say, well, this 30 milliliters plus 2.24, because of my guessing in the 30, I can say, well, I'm going to have about 30 milliliters when I add them all together. And if I'm thinking that way and thinking about sig figs and thinking, well, it's only going to be about 30, then I'm not surprised when I get 29.3 milliliters and I'm not misled. So that is why significance are so important. Keep in mind, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So when you're doing calculations, your answers to your calculations can only be as exact as the least precise measurement that you are using in those calculations. So always keep this in mind when you're doing calculations, and then you won't be misled or surprised or have any bad dates.